since April this year, the unemployment rate among Chinese youths has repeatedly hit new heights, reaching an unprecedented 21.3% in June. Millions of university graduates struggle to find decent white-collar jobs in urban areas, gravitating instead towards the food delivery industry. At the end of August, Xing Bin, a lecturer at Lingyi University, went undercover and documented his experience as a delivery rider. He recounted delivering 2,000 orders in a month and earning just over 7,000 yuan, around 953 US dollars describing the process as extremely laborious and exploitative. As more businesses shut down and people lose their jobs, the bleak scenario of an imminent economic collapse is becoming painfully apparent, subjecting every individual in China to profound distress and adversity. Recently, Xing Bin, a lecturer at the Faculty of Arts at Linyi University in Shandong, became a trending topic across Chinese social media networks with his article titled Winter 2022, I Deliver Food in Linyi City, sharing his experience as a delivery rider from December 2022 to January 2023. Xing Bin noted that within a month, he completed over 2,000 deliveries, averaging 67 orders per day. He interacted with hundreds of businesses and knocked on more than 2,000 doors. On a daily average, he rode 210 kilometers on a motorbike, walked 32,000 steps and climbed 110 flights of stairs. His calculations reveal an average hourly income of 10 yuan, around $1.30, with 20 yuan, approximately $2.70, being the upper limit. In Lingyi City, full-time delivery riders work 12 to 14 hours daily for 26 to 28 days a month, earning an average monthly salary of 6,000 yuan, around $800. Those who push themselves to the limit might earn over 8,000 yuan, around $1,100 often risking their lives by breaking traffic rules in the city. Part-time crowdsourced riders have it even tougher, with a 30% lower pay per delivery, taking on leftover orders that are either too far or require stair climbing. An increasing number of people resort to this profession out of desperation. One rider confessed to Xing Bin that among various physical labor jobs, including parcel sorting at delivery centers, moving goods, and hauling tiles upstairs, food delivery is the most grueling way to earn money. But farming at home yields little income and construction work often does not guarantee payment. During his month-long stint, Xing Bin encountered delivery riders as old as 66, along with many female riders. Despite their hard work, they only manage to earn 3 to 4,000 yuan a month. That is around $450. In recent months, Xing Bin has witnessed a growing number of female and elderly riders competing fiercely for orders. Despite the inherent dangers and grueling nature of the job, they cannot afford to forgo this source of income, with family members, sick relatives, and mortgage repayment notices all awaiting them. Xing Bin reflected on the systemic disadvantages facing delivery riders. During this undercover experience, Xing emphasized that his main focus was understanding the actual circumstances these delivery riders find themselves in and how they feel, cope, and react to these encounters. Apart from the physical toll, verbal abuse is a significant concern. Xing Bin discovered that in China, delivery riders are prone to fines and wage deductions. A complaint about a bad attitude from a customer can result in a heavy fine of 500 yuan, which could be more than one-tenth of their monthly wage. Late deliveries might incur a minimum deduction of 40% from their delivery fees. But in contrast, his research into the international courier industry showed that besides the high delivery charges in the US and Japan, both customers and delivery riders have a relatively equal standing where complaints are concerned. 
For instance, customers receiving five negative reviews from riders can be banned from ordering food for a year, forcing them to pick up their orders in person. In disputes that the company cannot resolve, both parties can present evidence in court and even sue the company where internal unions hold substantial influence. Meanwhile in China, the food delivery platform companies operate differently. Xingbin analyzed, quote, under the enhancements of big data and artificial intelligence, their operations have become more precise and meticulous, aptly recruiting a sufficient number of laborers just enough to sustain the most basic living standards. They are unable to save up enough to grow their wealth, forcing them to live like donkeys tied firmly to this grueling mill. During this time, Xingbin witnessed the stringent conditions imposed by food delivery companies on delivery riders, particularly concerning insurance policies. He revealed that the few companies he worked for would deduct 60% from the daily free yuan insurance fee allocated for the delivery riders, remitting only 1.2 yuan to the insurance company. This cover provides a maximum of 6,000 yen for casualty insurance. If this amount proves insufficient, the burden falls on the county operators. In extreme cases where medical expenses escalate, these operators may abscond, leaving individuals with no one to hold accountable. Legal actions against city operators or the headquarters of food delivery companies are futile, due to the prevalent practice of labor outsourcing, which has effectively isolated these firms from liability. He added that such severe casualties occur monthly in urban areas. In the event of a sudden death of a rider whilst on the job, the food delivery companies do not hold any responsibility, so any litigation is a waste of resources. Notably, no nationwide lawsuit against these companies has succeeded. This article has spurred significant reactions, with netizens not only highly acknowledging Xing Bin's undercover experience, but also expressing empathy towards the strenuous work of delivery personnel. Some netizens voiced, unions must genuinely become unions to fix this problem. Unlike Xing Bin, many individuals enter this industry out of sheer necessity for survival. A recent viral video has also caught attention, featuring Mr. Du, who identifies as a 36-year-old former marketing director at a Fortune 500 company's Chengdu branch. After a year of unemployment and resorting to food delivery, he had initially believed that finding a new job with his credentials wouldn't be a challenge. Despite submitting thousands of resumes and engaging with 600 companies over a year, he found no success. Left with a mere 20,000 yuan, his daily routine had shrunk to job hunting, gaming and sleeping, before the financial pressure nudged him into the food delivery sector. But I couldn't find a job even after searching for a year. Initially, I was quite spirited, aiming for positions with higher salaries or those more suited to my skills, with a monthly salary of 30,000 yuan. Gradually, I lowered my expectations to 10,000 yuan and even below, but still couldn't secure a job. Now, not only people like me who came from large companies are doing food deliveries, but many Ching Hua PH holders are also into it. The food delivery industry, with its low entry barriers, is perceived as a fallback occupation for most. However, now it is overcrowded with too many people, including unemployed workers, entrepreneurs who faced business failures, and graduates unable to find jobs. This influx has led to a sharp decrease in orders and income for each rider. Media reports have shed light on the grim conditions of some food delivery riders. Individuals risking their lives to complete over 50 orders in heavy rain only to be fined 1,000 yuan and suspended for 7 days due to two mistaken deliveries. Some living in makeshift tents on their electric scooters to save money, others eating instant noodles on the road as their lunch in an effort to accept more orders. Last month, I completed over 1,200 deliveries, earning 4 yuan per delivery for the first 700 and 5 yuan thereafter. I made over 5,300 yuan, plus an additional 300 for full attendance, totaling 5,600 yuan. Rent cost me 700 yuan, vehicle rental was 500, I had a fall one day costing 40 in food damages, and vehicle repairs amounted to over 100 yuan.
since I rent and live alone without anyone to cook. I spend 30 to 40 yuan daily on meals, summing up to 1,200 yuan a month. My total personal expenditure was over 2,000 yuan, and I transferred 1,000 yuan back home. Since last year, a notable number of highly educated graduates have started working as food delivery riders. In a food delivery station in Binjiang, Hangzhou, newcomer Li Kai let out a long sigh as he lay down after a 10-hour shift. A native of Jiangxi, the 23-year-old graduated from Zhejiang Gongshan University in 2022. Unable to find a job, he was attracted to the food delivery sector due to its low entry barriers, decent earnings, and flexible schedule. However, reality quickly dampened his enthusiasm. In 2023, the influx of riders significantly outpaced the growth in orders, forcing every worker to scramble competitively. This sentiment is shared by his dormitory roommates. For instance, the person sleeping on the bunk above him is the 34-year-old Yang Haodong. Previously a programmer in the education training sector, Yang became unemployed due to industry regulations and the pandemic's impact. With a child to support and a mortgage to pay and facing difficulty finding work, he had no choice but to join the ranks of delivery riders. 27-year-old master's graduate Wang Dan began preparing for civil service exams after graduating from Zhejiang Normal University in 2021. After an unsuccessful initial attempt, he opted to work as a part-time writer to support his ongoing exam preparations. Li Kai said at that moment he truly saw the predicament he and his roommates were in, unemployed individuals striving to find a way to sustain themselves. Li Kai often feels a sense of identity mismatch. Specializing in foreign trade studies, he believes that a job involving intellectual work at a computer would be more fitting. Besides his best friend from university, no one knows about his job delivering food. In addition to college graduates, many unemployed middle-aged individuals have also joined the delivery workforce. 38-year-old former journalist at Southern Weekly, Chen Tao, said during an interview in July, I hold a master's degree from a top 985 university, have been jobless for half a year and haven't found work yet. Over 98% of the resumes I sent out went unanswered. Despite my substantial work experience and advanced degree, no one seems interested in hiring someone over the age of 35. A few years ago, I felt that finding a job was relatively easy. To be honest, I downloaded practically every recruitment app last year. I communicated with bosses 1953 times, but only received invitations for three or four interviews. That's how scarce they were. In fact, more than half of them were left unread, meaning no one even looked at them. Moreover, now a single position requires two or three rounds of interviews, something I hadn't experienced before. It seems excessive for a small company to have two or three rounds of interviews. By the end, it seems only those at an executive level are being considered for the positions. After the pandemic restrictions were lifted, Chen Tao found work as a delivery rider. However, three months later, he couldn't sustain this job either, as orders completely dried up. In the evenings, I would wait outside for two to three hours without getting a single order. It even got to the point where I had to use software to snatch orders. The surge in individuals turning to working as food delivery riders is closely linked to the current employment landscape in mainland China, reflecting the intertwined dynamics of job opportunities and unemployment rates. So, how many people are currently employed in the food delivery sector in China? According to recent data disclosed by the Meituan platform, the number of delivery riders has seen a significant increase in the past two years. In 2021, there were 5.3 million Meituan riders, a number that grew to 6.2 million in 2022. It surpassed 7 million in 2023. Including the second largest platform, Elema, the total number of food delivery personnel in China has now exceeded 10 million. At present, various industries in China are experiencing a decline, with numerous foreign companies leaving and the wave of closures hitting private enterprises, resulting in fewer available jobs.
Specifically, due to the Chinese government's crackdown in the education and training industry, tens of millions of workers have lost their livelihoods, inevitably putting pressure on employees in other sectors. The real estate industry is experiencing a similar trend, with an increasing number of professionals leaving, thereby altering the competitive landscape of other industries. China's youth unemployment rate has been soaring month by month this year. Data released in July shows that 21.3% of individuals between the ages of 16 and 25 are unemployed, setting a new historic high. In the following month, officials announced the cessation of the publication of these figures. With the economic downturn and employment challenges, an increasing number of people are flocking to the food delivery industry, leading to supply-demand imbalance and fierce competition. The income of food delivery riders is continuously decreasing while risks and pressures are escalating. They face numerous crises including traffic accidents, customer complaints and platform penalties, all while enduring earnings that are barely sufficient to cover basic living costs. Statistics reveal that the average monthly income of food delivery riders in China is around 3,000 yuan, more than a half reduction compared to last year. This means they need to complete over 30 orders daily just to make ends meet. This is the scenario in populated areas. In more remote or quiet places, the order volume is even less, resulting in lower earnings. All these reveal the dark and hopeless side of the food delivery industry, an industry that once provided a lifeline for the unemployed and low-income groups has now become a trap, plunging them into deeper difficulties. Moreover, the issue of safeguarding the rights and interests of tens of millions of food delivery riders in China remains unresolved. In late 2019, a delivery rider named Xiao Xinyin was injured in a severe traffic accident during a delivery, sustaining serious leg fractures and three broken ribs. However, claiming occupational injury compensation proved to be a challenge, as it required proof of an existing labor relationship. In this case, several companies were involved with the food delivery riders, including the platforms, Yet determining a labor relationship with these companies was conspicuously lacking, leaving Xiao Xinyin baffled by the complex relations he had with these numerous companies. Initially, Xiao Xinyin won the labor arbitration in Beijing, confirming a labor relationship with a logistics company affiliated with the station. However, the company later filed a lawsuit in its registered location, Chongqing. In subsequent lawsuits, Xiao Xinyin consistently lost and could not afford the high litigation costs. Due to the lawyer's appeal to the public, which garnered enough attention, the case was eventually settled through mediation. Audien Chao of the non-governmental organization China Labor Bulletin, based in Hong Kong, said, They have no job security, no minimum wage, no fixed working hours and no social insurance. Essentially, they have nothing.